Yes, this talk is, a, is about modeling. It's, it's a virtual world. We're moving into uh, from, from experiments to virtual world. And it's, it's also about climate change. And you might wonder that last March was the coldest on record for some part of the UK, whether we should talk about climate change now. Uh, Met Office downgraded some of, revised some of the prediction of global warming. And, and, and they believe that the sensitivity of climate model they consider is too high. And now several climate centers in the world trying to, to, to revise the sensitivity. Sensitivity of climate model, it's amount of global temperature increase when you double CO2. So that was too high because if you look for the last 10 years, the temperature hasn't changed as much as model predicted. So we're now downgrading, but climate change still on and in, in a full extent. DEFRA published uh, a report uh, last year, in, in January last year, and it's the first uh, UK climate change risk assessment report. This type of report will be repeated every five years, and this report covers not only agriculture, but all the industries which is relevant to the UK. It's, it's only a focus on UK science. And if, if you look on this prediction, which was marked with medium confidence, it says that uh, wheat yield increase between now and 2050, just because of temperature increase, would be between 40 and 140%. So just because of temperature, uh, they predicted yield increase two and a half fold, up to two and a half fold. Predictions are probabilistic because they're based on UK CP09 climate scenarios and Met Office did these scenarios in a probabilistic way. For those of you who knows how plants develop, that could be very surprising a conclusion because we know that if you increase temperature, plants develop faster and you, if any other uh, conditions the same, you expect actually yield to go down, not to increase, especially to this rate. Uh, what, what they did, because they had to assess so many indices, about a hundred risk assessment, they try to use a very minimalistic, very simplistic model. And, and for wheat prediction, what they did, they plotted a wheat yield, UK average yield, over the years. This is a, this line. And you can see that at the beginning of the century, it was about two tons. Then through Green Revolution, it's increased almost fourfold. It's a bit uh, flat now at about nearly eight ton per hectare. What they've done next, they also plotted a temperature. Temperature, average temperature from March till November for the same period of time. And what they noticed that from 60s, temperature increased a bit, and that is due to global warming. And also they noticed that yield increased substantially. So they decided to build a model by correlating these two variables. So this is your mean temperature between March and November. This is UK national yield. Regression, and they, uh, they selected years from 1960 to 2010. So regression, it's not very good regression. It's not explaining a lot. And as soon as you add variability of temperature and yield from this period, it would be completely random. But they still concluded that there is some skills here, so they decided to use this regression to predict yield. And, and this is a kind of a textbook mistake. If you develop regression in this region, you never take your regression beyond the region because statistical model, they are not process-based. As soon as you're taking it beyond the interval where they were developed, all sorts of strange things could happen. But they very, very 
confidently, with medium confidence, put 2050 and then push even further to 2008. That's where twofold increase comes. Of course, it's not very scientific. <laughs> and, and, and we published a commentary in Nature Climate Change explaining that this simplistic approach is approach ignore a major fa factors and ma basically green revolution which was responsible for yield increase and the prediction could be seriously misleading we, we of course we discussed this with defra and and they they accepted our criticism but if you go to defra website the report is still there unchanged that's a bit scary of course prediction of impact of climate change on yield, it's extremely complex issue. Because first of all, you need to know how your climate evolve, and there are huge uncertainty there. Then you need to build something which is process-based. And, and this framework, which we, we, we were developing for the last 20 years, the core of this framework is a serious crop uh, simulation model this is a process-based model, and it encapsulates all possible knowledge which biologists, plant scientists produce into mathematical equation. And now having this model, we can, if we supply a proper soil description, a proper weather, proper management, and so-called cultivar parameters, which is reflection of different cultivars, so we can separate between different cultivars, you, you can predict yield. As soon as, 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 as you can produce something similar to weather in 2050, and it's on its own complex task, because what you have from climate people, it's so-called climate projection. So they project climate. So they use global climate model, which you run on a resolution of 200 kilometers by 200 kilometers. In the UK, you have only like five cells for that. But you need to produce something like weather time series, which what a model like Sirius will accept as input as weather. So we developed also this. And when you combine these two, you can answer some question about future wheat performance, future threats. And this is quite complex. And it requires much more time than regress average yield to average temperature. So the, the first question I, I just show you how, how we use this framework is, is try to answer what would be the major threat in the future for wheat production in Europe, whether it's going to be drought or heat stress. Why we selected drought and heat stress? Heat stress is very simple. Tempera we know that temperature increases. This is prediction of temperature increase in absolute values. So it's a two degrees is, is about here. For the future, this is months, January, February, March. Location is Rotomstedt. It's for 2050. And, and because we use an ensemble of global model, we, each model predicts slightly differently. This box plots its uncertainty in prediction of this temperature. So your mean temperature increased by about two degrees. But it means that your extreme temperature or climatic variability could go even further. So it's, it, the heat stress could be a substantial issue. What about drought? This is prediction, again, at Rotomstedt in the UK. And this is line, it's relative change in percentage. Not in percentage, it's, it's just relative change. Line 1 means no changes here. This means that in the UK, we can expect slightly more precipitation during winter time, where we don't need this precipitation to grow wheat. And we can expect up to 20% less precipitation during summertime, when what is, water is needed. So the question is, which of these factors would be most important? And just a few words about this heat shock. Plant, plant is sensitive 
at certain stage of their development, plant is sensitive to high temperature. If it's not sensitive, you can have a single day of very high temperature and nothing happened. Just photosynthesis would be low, but plant will develop uh, further without any damage. But if, if high, heat, high temperature heat wave happen around flowering, then it could potentially decrease a grain number. And this is because the pollen becoming sterile and, and the grain set is not happening. So you can lose about half of your grain just by a single high temperature event. And when I say high temperature event, it's not really very high. It could be 27, 30 degrees when you start to notice that you're losing grain number. The second, the second effect, again, just a few days, one, two days, is about five days after flowering when, you, when the plants start to set the grain walls. So if your plant experience heat shock five days after flowering, the grain walls become rigid and the grain can't expand further. So even plant will have resources to put more biomass into yield. The, the grain wouldn't be able to accept it. And that could happen only like very few days, one, two days, and you're losing a large proportion of your yield. So uh, the question, what is important, heat stress or drought, we, we answer by this title. Modeling predicts that heat stress, not drought, will increase vulnerability of wheat in Europe. And, and, and that's explanation. So what has been done? We selected several locations. This is Denmark, this is Seville, Spain, Italy, and this is Rotomstedt here. And then we generated current condition, and then we generated future condition, and we make a comparison. And this graph presents a drought stress index. This is how much yield you will lose just due to water limitation because we have a luxury with the model. We can run model with full water, no limitation on water, and with limitation, and we can compare, and it's, it's not very expensive. So this is Northern Europe, this is Denmark here, and this is Seville South Europe, it's here. And, and, and the, the black, black dots is a current situation and, and this box plot, because we're using different GCM's prediction, it's a, it, it's, it's a future situation. Let's take Rotomstedt in here. So for the current situation, and this is not just drought stress index, it's 95 per percentile of drought stress index. It's what uh, water yield, lo uh, uh, yield losses due to water stress you can expect once every 20 years. So at Rotomstedt, you can expect about 20% now. And if you look into the future, it's about the same. For any other site, you can see that actually losses from drought is predicted to be decreased. So we still have a problem with the drought, but it's not going to be more severe than it is now. It's quite, quite, quite controversial, counterintuitive, because because you think if you have less precipitation during summer, definitely you should have more drought effect on your yield. But what happened, as I mentioned before, that plant develop in thermal time. So when temperature increased by two degrees, we developing earlier. And this is Avalon, it's again at Rotomstedt. This is a day of maturity for the current condition. It's, it's already in the past. It's, it's the beginning of August. For the future condition, which mature in the middle of July. So by the time you can start to experience drought, the plant crop wheat is already matured. So basically, by accelerating development due to temperature increase, the plant just escape from the drought. If you look, if you look on the heat stress, situation is different. So again, again, I withdraw here the probability of heat stress exactly at anthesis. And this is joint probability to have a heat stress at anthesis and shortly after anthesis. So 
If the first event happened, we're losing grain number. If the second event happened, we're losing grain number and grain size. So it's much more drastic potential reduction in yield. And you can see that for majority of sites here, with a very little exception, the risk of to have such event will increase in the future. Of course, you, you, you can, and, and this is a temperature at flowering, and this is, and, and you can see even plant will have development early, it's still not enough to have set temperature increase. It's still temperature at anthesis would be more than one degree higher. Mean temperature, extreme temperature could be even further uh, higher than, than it is now. So you may say that if we look on the southern Europe, the probability of this to happen is already very, very high. And, and, and you can't grow heat sensitive variety in the southern Europe because you will be losing yield uh, uh, three years in four years just due to heat stress. This means that for southern Europe, the cultivar being already uh, developed uh, uh, as a heat tolerant varieties. For the Northern Europe, up to here, this kind of event never happened before because probability is very low. And this probability starts to become much, much higher than it is now. So the Northern variety, which is, which is heat sensitive, will start to experience this event and we can ex expect the yield losses through heat stress. That's why if you have a limited port of resources, my, my suggestion would be to, be to, to breed now for heat stress tolerant variety rather than for drought tolerance. Now we move to, to design of EDA type. And as we heard this morning, it's, it's a question now how to, to feed 9 billion people. And average yield in the UK now, it's about 8 ton. It's, it's almost it's a farmer's yield, so it's, it's nearly the highest yield you can get in, in the world. At Rotomstedt, we, we have a, a strategic program, one of the program 2020 wheat, and the task is set there to produce wheat with a potential yield of 20 ton in 20 years' time, which is, which is very, very high. If you look on, on the yield record, the yield record in 91 was set up in Scotland, probably not far from here, and it was nearly 14 tons. This is a farmer's yield, and farmers, farmer has to harvest this yield over seven hectares field. In 2010, this yield record increased to 15 and a half ton. So actually, the gap is not big, and if you try to modify a crop, you might be getting this 20 ton yield in 20 years' time. This is the structure of this program, and you can see that the, there are several work packages. One work package trying to maximize field to change photosynthesis and nutrient use efficiency. A second package is, is trying to protect yield from disease and pests. The third package is trying to use resources in the most soil resources in the most efficient way. And in this package, we are trying to look how we can combine all this right to produce the most optimal high yielding wheat. This is some challenges for breeding under climate change. The first challenge is that it's a very large uncertainty in climate prediction. This is a picture of global temperature increase from the last IPCC assessment report, which was in 2007. Uh, this year and next year would be published a new assessment report, IPCC report 5. So, but projection would be in the same range, and uncertainty is not going to be reduced. So you have to breed for something which is very uncertain. The future threats to wheat are not yet well understood, so you don't even know what drought might be useful for the future. 
if you have a good candidate, you can only test it if you're going to test it in the field for the current climate. So you're testing it for the current climate. And whatever is going to be optimal here might be not optimal in the future. It looks like modeling could be a very powerful tool just to, to give you opportunity to play with the different trites and see how this trite, how much importance of this trite would be needed in the future. So what, what we've done, we set up experiments, computer experiments. We use this crop model. And as I said, there are several parameters up to, up to probably 20 parameters which could be cultivar specific. In this particular exercise, we selected only eight parameters. And so we were varying these parameters. And as soon as we produce new idea type, we were testing it for the future environment. And then if this idea type performance was very good, we selected it and then perturbed the parameters again. So it, it looks like we, we set up this search algorithm for the optimal idea type for the future. The, these are parameters which were varied in this exercise. So some of the parameters related to phenology and parameter included phylochron. This is the thermal time required to grow a single leaf in which day length response, that's a parameter. If, if you're in a long day or short day, you might need to produce extra leaf and that's what this parameter is responsible. Duration of grain filling, this is parameter which define in thermal time how long the grain filling period will last. There is some parameters which describe efficiency of roots and it's to uptake water. And, and the strategy here is to take as much water as you can to satisfy demand in anticipation that some water will come later in the season. Or alternatively, you can use water uh, kind of more efficient, efficiently. So you keep your plant under stress, but you preserve in soil water for growing grain filling period. So there are two parameters which relate related to drought tolerance. One is response of photosynthesis to water stress, and another one is responsible for leaf senescence. And then there are two parameters which related to canopy. And one parameter is the maximum leaf size, and another parameter is stay green property. So it's the length of uh, leaf life in, in phylochron, for example. And, and we set up some parameters here. So this model been calibrated for many cultivars, probably 20, 30 cultivars, modern cultivars. So when we were setting boundary, for example, phylochron from 70 to 140, we selected in a way that, that, that there are some cultivar already very close to these parameters. So we selected existing range of parameters plus adding 25% from both sides. So it's, it's quite realistic values. Uh, and, and now we set up simulation for two very contrasting sites. One is Rotomstead and one, one is, is Seville. And, and this is temperature now and dash line is temperature in the future. And, and you can see Seville is temperature already much, much higher. And this is precipitation. So that's a reduction during summertime. And in Seville precipitation collapsing in the summer now in the current climate and in the future climate as well, summertime is very, very dry. So our objective of our optimization was to produce the highest yield, but we don't want yield which changes from one to another year low high yield. So variation is, should be under 10%. We're also limited to harvest index 
limited harvest index for the crop to 65%. As soon as we reach this uh, condition, we stop. This, this is some of the steps of this optimization. This is the first step, and you can see that because it's, it's a function, uh, optimal yield is, is a multi uh, optima function. When you start with a single cultivar prototype, you can end up in a local minimum. So we need to run from several points, and this is 10 best idea type. And you can see here that, for example, grain filling collapse up to the top. So all cultivar which produce yield, high yield, needs to have the maximum grain filling period. This, this is the parameters for which we selected uh, from this five best EDA type. And you can see that for Rotamstedt and Claire, we have slightly different situation. We have convergence of parameters relating to grain filling period, then canopy, uh, architecture, maximum leaf area, and also to phenology. In, in Seville, we have on the top of this parameter, you need we have a convergence to uh, water stress parameter. So drought tolerant parameter was optimized quite substantially. The current value of these parameters, these plots here, it means that to come from current situation to optimal, you need to move a quite substantial way in one or another direction. With exception for phenology, for example, for for in Seville, phenology in Seville was very close to, phenol to almost optimal phenology for the huge climate. This is our yield. So this is current variety Claire and Cartaya. This is yield for 2050. The current variety will produce about 11, 12 ton in the future and about up to 8 ton. If you optimize variety, you can produce above 20 ton in UK and above 16, 17 ton in wheat yield in Spain. We assume that 10% increase in light use efficiency would be possible. And, and, and it, it, there are some papers explaining why it could be possible. So how, how, we, how this idea type achieve this uh, an enormous yield increase, mainly because they were able to increase grain filling periods. At, at Rotamstead, it's happened because Anthesis Day was brought about 25 days earlier. In Spain, Anth Anthesis Day stay about the same, so it's 100 day 100, so it's about beginning of April. So if you try to take your anthesis day even earlier, you're, you're moving your plant not to optimal radiation conditions. So you need to try to actually postpone your maturity day. And that's why this uh, water tolerant characteristic, drought tolerant characteristic was so important in Seville. And as you can see here, that the harvest index was pushed absolutely to theoretical maximum. So 63%. 63% at Rotomstead compared with 47 now and 62. There are several work, a published paper where they try to assess what the maximum harvest index is a yield. You divide its yield to total biomass. So 62, it means 63%. It means that if you take total biomass, 63% would be your yield. So it's quite amazing, but that, that could be possible. The only limitation here that when we were varying this parameter, we were varying them independently. It's, they could be correlated. So actually, we might not be able to achieve the CDA type, but at least we know which parameter we need to change. This is some of the conclusions which you can probably read. But this great improvement in yield could be achieved with increase of light use efficiency absolutely necessary to increase duration of grain filling and absolutely necessary to, to find optimal parameters for phenology because you need to place phenology on the right spot. So intercept maximum radiation and not to run into terminal drought like, like 
in Seville, for example. Thank you, Michel.